let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for the workers' meeting today. We praise your name because you have called us together so you can use us to be a blessing in the lives of other people. We're praying that you open our eyes to more of our responsibilities, even today in Jesus' name. We pray that your spirit will impress and apply your word to every one of our hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tonight, we're going to look at the word of God concerning the ministry of of a watchman. The ministry of a watchman. This is the message of scripture that everyone needs to understand and examine regularly, especially those of us who by the grace of God have been called to get involved in the work of eternal value. Our eternal happiness depends on our faithfulness in such a ministry. On the other hand, our eternal punishment will depend on our faithfulness in such a ministry. God has appointed each one to be a watchman over some people here on earth. And every watchman will give an account of his life, of his ministry, of his stewardship to God on the last day. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. Here God spoke to Ezekiel, and he told Ezekiel that he had been made a watchman over the Israel of his day. Notice that, not the Israel of the past, not the Israel of the future. The same thing. In the time in which you are alive, God has made you a watchman over the people that live around you. And God has also outlined the responsibilities of a watchman. What a watchman ought to do. Basically, as God told Ezekiel, there are two definite responsibilities. One, preach to save, to preach, to keep, to save sinners, and to keep the saints. Look at verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. God told Ezekiel that as a watchman, his responsibilities toward the sinner were so well outlined. He was to do everything necessary and everything possible so that the sinner will hear and understand the message that will rescue him from spiritual death. He said, Ezekiel, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die, it becomes your responsibility that will give that sinner the message in clear terms, the message in clear pictures, the message at an appropriate time so that he will understand and you'll give this word unto him if that wicked man has been warned and he does not repent 
then you have rescued yourself from judgment. But if you don't warn him, talk to him, he will die in his iniquity, but then his blood will I require at your hand. Which means, Ezekiel would have been responsible for the death of the one that died in sin. As if Ezekiel had killed that individual. That's what it means for the blood to be required at his hand. Yet, verse 19, if thou want the wicked, and he turned not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. From verse 20, God began to outline very definitely and clearly the responsibility of the watchman over those who are already children of God. Again, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou, the watchman, one, the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he is one. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. Here the Lord is telling us that as watchmen, if we are faithful, then we'll be able to make heaven our home at last. If, on the other hand, we are negligent and we fail, we bring damnation, judgment, suffering upon ourselves as watchmen. The Lord continued emphasizing to Ezekiel because of the importance of the ministry of the watchman. He began to tell Ezekiel the details of what he will have to do as a watchman. Ezekiel chapter 33, from verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts, and search him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he bloweth the trumpet and warn the people, then, whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come, and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. That's what we read before. How do you feel that Ezekiel would have felt of the great weight of responsibility because God was now telling Ezekiel that his eternal salvation or security does not only depend upon his right standing but that it depended upon his faithfulness in the ministry of the watchman and how do you feel as the Spirit of God interprets this message to you, that you have been made a watchman, and you cannot say, I am free, I am all right with God, and I will surely make it at last, because I commit no sin, by the grace of God, I am living a righteous life, 
It says, when you examine your life as an individual to see whether you are in favor with God or not, you are not just going to stop there. You are going to go ahead and examine how you are carrying out your responsibility as a watchman. If you are failing as a watchman, then you know that on the last day, the Lord will require the blood of the people from your hand. Now it says to Ezekiel that in verse 2, when I bring a sword upon the land, a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, set him for their watchman, if the people take him, and they say, you'll be our watchman. We give you the office and the ministry of the watchman. That man has a great responsibility over him. And the same thing, that you have been selected to be watchmen over some groups of people. Not only groups of people that are saved. You'll see from what God was telling Ezekiel that there were sinners, the people that were living in sin, that he was a watchman over. You see, sometimes if we do not understand the responsibility of the watchman, we're likely to say, that man is a sinner. He's just living in the community. He's not a member of the church. I have no ministry, I have no responsibility over that man. And yet God says, if that wicked man dies in his sin, you as the watchman will pay for the blood of that person that dies. And we need to begin to consider if we want to have the well done from the Lord on the last day. In verse 7, So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, Thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. I don't know how Ezekiel would have felt at the greatness of the task. Because Ezekiel was made a watchman over the whole nation. And you know there were many tribes in the nation of Israel. And God said, Thou son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them, all of them, from me. As we begin to realize that they were scattered in various tribes, and they were separated by geographical boundaries. And they had even local priests and Levites that may be confusing them or misleading them. And Ezekiel did not have all the communication gadgets and instruments that people have today to use. You begin to understand the difficulties and the enormous nature of the responsibility of Ezekiel. And yet God told Ezekiel, whichever way you will do it, I have made you a watchman over that whole nation. When you hear the word at my mouth, you are not only to tell just one tribe, you are to tell all the people, warn them from me. Verse 8, when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Ezekiel will not say he didn't know. Ezekiel will not say he did not know that the measure of judgment that will come upon him will depend upon how he had been faithful to giving out the word and the warning of the Lord to all the people over which the Lord had made him watchman. Nevertheless, in verse 9, 
If thou want the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his, iniqu in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. And so as God spoke to Ezekiel, he made him to understand the details of ministry and the activities that a watchman ought to have. And as you have been made a watchman by the Lord himself, it becomes necessary that we look at the word of God as to what are the details. And as I share some scriptures with you now, you should begin to see that these are the things that God has placed upon you as responsibility, as ministry. And these will determine your activities as a watchman. Remember, if you fail, remember, if you are negligent on the last day, God will ask you about the people that die in their sins over which God has made you to be a watchman. In the Songs of Solomon, chapter 3, from verse 1, By night on my bed, I sought him whom my soul loved. I sought him, but I found him not. I will rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the broad ways I will seek him whom my soul loved. I sought him but I found him not. The watchmen that go about the city found me to whom I said saw ye him whom my soul loved. You do not hear many messages from the songs of Solomon. Just like you do not have many messages or do not hear many messages from the book of Daniel and from the book of Revelation and from the prophecy of Zechariah. The reason is because most people in the church do not understand the significance of these books in the Bible. And they do not understand the revelation knowledge that is given in these books. We have studied Daniel already in our church here. And we have studied Revelation already in our church here. And if you remember the time we studied all those, uh, those two books, you will see that it takes an interpreter to interpret unto you. The same thing with the songs of Solomon. It needs an interpreter. But really, all the major dependable theologians in the church, they have known that this is the song concerning the bride to the bridegroom, concerning Israel unto God, and concerning the church to Christ. And here it is like someone who knows or loves the Lord, Jesus Christ the bridegroom, seeking for him. But he has lost contact with the bridegroom. He has lost contact with Christ, the lover of his soul. And in the night, he became filled with unrest and fear. And because of that, he couldn't sleep. And he said, by night on my bed, I sought him, whom my soul loved. Those may be the words of a backslider who is remembering the fellowship he used to have with the Lord. But now, that fellowship is no more there. And he's concerned about it. And he said, I sought him, but I found him not. These may be the words of a person who has heard about the Lord, but he has not known the Lord. And he's saying, I'm seeking him. I'm searching for him. The Prince of Peace. The lover of my soul. The one that died for me, yet I do not have the reality of the salvation experience. And he said, I will rise now 
and go about the city in the streets and in the broad ways. I will seek him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. And then he came, she came across the watchmen. He said, the watchmen that go about the city found me. While people are seeking the Lord, and they're going about in all religious shrines and temples and religious places, trying to find the lover of their soul, trying to find the peace of God. They do not find him, and they do not find that peace and salvation. Eventually, you as a watchman, even though they have not found the Lord, they find you. And then it says that she said to the watchman, Saw ye him whom my soul loveth? And there are many people in the world today, they know you to be Christian, they know you to be a watchman, they know you to know the Lord, and they are seeking for that Lord. And they are asking you, have you known him? Have you seen him? Can you point me to the lover of my soul so that I can also love him and worship him? That tells us one of the responsibilities of the watchman, pointing the lost to the Savior. Pointing the people that have broken fellowship with the Lord back to fellowship with him. In Isaiah chapter 21, Isaiah chapter 21, verse 6. For thus says, For thus as the Lord said unto me, Go, set a watchman, and let him, the watchman, declare what he seeth. Set a watchman. Let that watchman Declare what he sees. You as a watchman, here is your responsibility to declare what you have seen. Have you seen the suffering of Christ at Calvary? Let him declare what he sees. Have you seen the agony of the Lord concerning the people that are perishing? Have you seen that Jesus died for them and he shed his blood for them? Let the watchman declare what he sees. Have you partaken of the goodness of God and the grace of God? And have you known by, that by repenting and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, a man can have salvation and peace? Let the watchman declare what he sees. Have you seen that when sinners die, they get into life, into punishment, everlasting punishment? There is danger or doom awaiting sinners who die in their sins. Let the watchman declare what he sees. As a watchman, have you been reading the Bible? Have you seen the love of God in the Bible? That it is not the pleasure, not the will of God that any sinner should perish. Have you seen that in the Bible? Let the watchman declare what he sees. Have you seen that the heart of, of God is still reaching after the backslider? And he's saying, how shall I give up a prey? Because I've loved him with an everlasting love. Have you seen that in the word of God? That he's not willing that even the backslider should perish, but that the father of the prodigal son it's all the time waiting for him and watching for him. Let the watchman declare what he sees. Chapter 21 of Isaiah, verse 8. And he cried, a lion, my Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward all night. That is the watchman is to alert the people when there is a lion and is to sound the alarm. The alarm that will show the people that are negligent, that, is, that there is insecurity because there is a lion. Have you seen that there are wolves 
Have you seen that there are liars, false prophets, deceiving the people? And they are giving them false doctrine? And they are deceiving and deluding their souls? Let the watchmen cry out, Behold a lion, behold the false prophet, and warn them, and alert them. Let them be alarmed at their insecurity. Verse 11, the burden of Duma. He calleth to me out of fear. Watchman, watch of the night. Watchman, watch of the night. It is from the watch night, the watchman, that the people in the city should be asking, what are the dangers in the night? What are the things that are bringing security in the night? They are the people to sound the alarm. Watch night. Watchman rather. Watch of the night. And then it says in verse 12, the watchman said, The morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye. Return, come. It is the responsibility of the watchman that they will tell the people that are ignorant, that do not know of the imminence of the coming of the Lord and of the danger of the night, the night time. It is the watchman that will tell the people that are inquiring and he will give them answers to the inquirers who are looking for escape and looking for refuge. I will tell them that there will be destruction except they come into the refuge of the Lord right now. You need to be asking yourself whether you have been fulfilling these responsibilities. Remember that the judgment of God hangs very low upon the watchman that does not sound the alarm. Give the warning. Tell the people to escape the danger that is hanging upon them so that they can come into the refuge of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 56, verses 9 and 10. All ye beasts of the field, come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts in the forest his watchmen are blind they are all ignorant they are all dumb dogs they cannot bark sleeping lying down loving to slumber what the prophet is telling us here is that when watchmen are silent and they are not watching and they are not sounding the alarm, then there is liberty for the beasts of the field to devour and to destroy the people that are insecure. And it means for you, when you as a watchman, when you are not doing your responsibility, if you happen to be blind, you are blind to the spiritual needs of the people around you. Over which the Lord has made you a watchman. Or if you happen to be ignorant, ignorant of the reality of salvation. Not that you are not saved, but that you are ignorant of the fact that these people have not really been saved. And you are dumb, you never open your mouth and talk to the people, alert them and alarm them, and you love to slumber, to sleep, just to lie down. You are not actively involved in telling the people over which God has made you a watchman. You are not telling them how they can be in the arms of the Lord. Then the beasts of the field, the religions of the land, the false prophets in the land will destroy them and take them away from the Lord, or if they have not been saved, will take them 
away from the possibility of yielding their lives to the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Ye that make mention of the Lord, you are the watchmen. Sometimes you may not know that the word of God uses that language of watchmen for you. But here it clears it up that if you make mention of the name of the Lord, if the name of the Lord is on your mouth, if for you Jesus is Lord, and you mention that name in prayer, it says you cannot keep silence. You have been made a watchman. In the day or in the night, you must not hold your peace. The salvation of the world depends upon you. The salvation of the people who have not been saved depends upon you. Which means you must always preach that sinners will escape the judgment to come. God has made you watchmen over this city and over your own community in this city, not only over the believers in your community, but over the sinners, the people that do not know as yet, cry aloud, sound the alarm to the unconverted. But again, what is the message of the watchman? You have seen that you are a watchman, and you ought to be watching. Already we have covered that, but for emphasis, we look at that again. The message of the watchman in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. That's the message of the watchman. The message is the word of God. Hear the word at my mouth. And you have heard very often here the message of repentance and faith in Christ. That that's the only way that sinners can be saved. Hear that word at the mouth of the Lord and give warning. So the sinners warn them earnestly so that they will come unto the Lord. They will escape from the judgment to come. But not only that you preach to the sinners the way of salvation, you'll preach to the backsliders the way of restoration. You'll alert the backsliders. Normally, according to the Bible, the backslider is filled with his own ways. He or she has a lot of arguments, a lot of excuses, a lot of justification for his action, for his waywardness, for his backsliding, or for his attitude and behavior. But you are not to depend upon the excuses of the backslider. Because you know, he will be filled with his own ways. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14, the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. And so, but you know that he is lost. He is separated from the Father's love and is separated from the Father's fellowship. And therefore, though he may bring up many excuses and many accusations, even against God and against the people of God, you as a watchman over that backslider, you are to give him warning faithfully from the Lord. You are not to be bought over by the backslider and begin to sympathize with the backslider. But give him warning so that he will come back to the fold. He will come back to the Lord. You have a message to the sinner. You have a message for the backslider. 
you have a message for the righteous, for the saints. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 20, and when, again, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. There are places where they do not give any warning, any serious exhortation to those who are born again. Oh, they say they are already born again. They are already righteous. They are already children of God. But here the Lord is telling us that even the righteous person should be warned continually that he will be careful to remain with the Lord. That he will be careful not to go astray. That he will be careful not to rest on his oars and forsake the righteousness that God has put in his life. And you as the watchman, you are to continually warn the righteous. And of course your own life should be a warning, even to the righteous, that they would always, always depend upon the Lord, so that they keep the righteousness of the Lord all the time. Ezekiel 33 verse 7. The message of the watchman. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee, watchman, unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from me. Every word you hear from the mouth of the Lord, you have to give out to the people. Especially words that will keep them alert, so that they do not go the way of the world so that they do not turn back or look back from the kingdom of God that they have set their hands on the plow and if they look back they will no more be fit for the kingdom of God. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 6 For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the mount of Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. It's part of the message of the watchmen that they will not only alert the unconverted, alarm the careless, they will not only tell them how they will come into fellowship and relationship with the Lord, but the watchman is to tell them, Arise ye. Let us go up to Zion. Unto the Lord our God. You will call them for worship. You integrate them with the body of Christ. That they will not remain isolated and separated from the body of Christ. Arise ye. That's the message of the watchman. Let us Go up to Zion and worship the Lord our God. You are a watchman. And God will ask you of those who die, of those who are lost through your neglect. Sometimes when a funeral ceremony is going on in your own district, in your own zone, Maybe they are carrying the cross away to the mortuary that the sinner had been buried. You just pass by, you say that's not my concern, and yet a record has gone down in heaven. One of the people that you ought to have given the message of salvation to has died without your ever talking to that individual. Here you may be rejoicing that I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't sin, I've been following the Lord, and there is a lot of record in heaven that many people in your community are being lost through your neglect. It may be through your carelessness. 
in your place of work, that if you had been sensitive to the touch of the Spirit of God, the time when that worker, a co-worker, was confused, depressed, very open, wanting any solution that will come now, if you had been very open to the Spirit of God, He would have nudged you, touched you, pinched you at that time. And He would have said, go to Him now, this is the right time. But you didn't until the man went back home and he drunk himself so that he can forget all the sorrow and the agony that he had. Eventually, he drank himself to a hardness of heart that now he doesn't care anymore let what whatever may come let it come you may not realize that that person being lost is charged to your account if you had not been careless that person would not have been lost like that it may be that through your carnality that already the lord is working on an individual and others are preaching to that individual. But in your own community, that person sees you, knows that you are a Christian. But through your life, it may be that you jest and joke. It may be that you do some things that are foolish and sinful. And he saw it. Oh, and he felt. Why am I considering the point of having to go to the, you know, go to church and have the Lord? If that person is a Christian he can, and he can do that, well, I'm all right. And eventually the, beca the person became hardened in sin. And you do not know. You might just feel that, well, my immaturity, my imperfection, my carnality, is all my problem alone. A soul has been lost through your carnality. It might be that you are backsliding yourself. And in your community, you began to mix with the sinners over there. Drinking was there, eating was there, joking was there, and there was somebody there who had been under conviction, serious conviction of a sin, wanting to have the Lord as his personal Savior. And he's saying, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? And he happened to see you in the day of your backsliding. And then he felt, why am I so sorrowful as if I'm the worst sinner in the world? Look at this fellow. He's supposed to be a watchman. He's so, supposed to be a believer. And he doesn't even count this sin as anything serious. Maybe I'm only troubling myself for nothing. And then he gave himself back to the sins he had been committing. Another soul had been charged to your account. It may be because you are prayerless. That when you should have been praying, so that the fire of God will burn. The word of God from your mouth will be like fire, and the people shall be like stubble. But because you have not been praying, your words have been falling on their ears as water at the dog's back. And you do not know it is your prayerlessness that have been causing the people to be hardened in their sins. Their blood will be required at your hand. It may be through your own disobedience that you have hardened all these other people. And the Lord is saying that you are becoming like the Pharisees. You do not fully enter. And they that would have entered, you do not allow them to enter. They become twofold the children of hell because of your neglect. Because of your carelessness, because of your carnality, because of your backsliding, because of your prayerlessness, because of your disobedience. In Genesis chapter 4 verse 9, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord is asking you now. And the Lord will be asking you on the last day. Where is the sinner you were supposed 
to bring into the kingdom. Where is so and so thy neighbor? Where is so and so thine acquaintance? You trade with them in the market. Where are they in the kingdom of God? Have you ever spoken to them? You come across them in the bus. Where are they? Have you ever spoken to them about Christ? Where is Abel thy brother? You meet them in the places of work. Have you ever told them about the way of salvation? Where is so and so? The manager, your co-worker. Or the porter, the gate man. Or the messenger, the one that cleans your office. Or the co-workers that rub shoulders together. Where are they? Don't you know you've been made a watchman over them? The Lord is asking you now. And he may be asking you on the last day. If the backsliders are missing on that last day. He'll be saying, where is so and so the backslider? Whom you were supposed to influence and lead back to Christ. Will you be answering like Cain? Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my sister's keeper? Am I my friend's keeper? Am I my neighbor's keeper? Where is that member of the body of Christ whom you were supposed to counsel and encourage? Will you be asked, answering like Cain on that day? Am I the member's keeper? Where are your children? The children that live with you in the same house. 24 hours every day. Anytime you want to see them, you can see them. Have you ever spoken to them about Christ? Have you ever spoken to them about heaven? Does your life tell them that the greatest possession a man, a woman can have is salvation? Where are your relatives? The Lord will be asking you on that day, isn't there a reason why you have been born again among your many relatives? Where are they? Or are you answering like Cain? Am I my relative's keeper? Am I supposed to be interested in their salvation? Children of the same mother. Children of the same father. Where are they? Are they living with you here in Lagos? And you cannot break their hardness of heart by prayer? Are they sharing the same room with you? And you cannot break the hardness of their heart by the hammer of the word of God? Are they relating with you and eating together with you every time? And yet you cannot melt their hardened heart with the fire of the word of God? Where is Abel thy brother? Where is your sister? Where is your schoolmate? You're in that school together. Every time you see one another, you are saved, but only half saved. You see, as you are born again, as you are saved, you're only half saved now. It is when you have your responsibility as a watchman. And the blood of anyone is no more on your hand, no more on your head, that you are fully saved. As at now, was the blood of Abel on your dress, the blood of your neighbors on your head, the blood of the sinners in your hand, how are you fully saved? But you see, there is another thing here. When we get to heaven, you'll understand, how the blood of some people be required at your hand because of the moment of your carelessness. Say, for example, in your own house, your wife needs spiritual energy. And the solution to the problem of your wife's spiritual problem is coming out in a message that will be preached in the church. It may be tomorrow. And you don't know that that zonal leader is the one that will be preaching at the service. Here in the evening, you were talking. And while you are talking, 
You talk to your wife about that zonal leader. You criticize him. That zonal leader is imperfect. That zonal leader is not loving. That zonal leader is not knowledgeable. That zonal leader is not doing well. And your wife said, is that right? And all of a sudden, at that time, you forget the problem of your wife. When you come to church on Sunday, it happens to be that zonal leader that is preaching that day. And the solution to the spiritual problem of your wife is in that message from the zonal leader. But your, zonal leader, your wife has known a lot of bad, bad things about that zonal leader now. That everything that that man, that brother will say, everything is just forgotten. Because the wife will be thinking, ah, that's the zonal leader my husband was talking about last night. If your wife is lost, because of that careless talk that you had Saturday night or Wednesday night or any other night, the blood of your wife is on your head. It may be that we, because we relate together with a lot of these coordinators, maybe you've seen the coordinators when they said some things that were not correct. They made a slip of the tongue. They said, well, a particular parable that Jesus spoke is in Matthew instead of saying that it was seen Look, and then at home you are talking to your children as well as your uh, wife and maybe your husband if you happen to be a woman and say, all these coordinators, in particular brother so and so, the coordinator, you know, they're not studying the Bible. They're not studying the Bible. They don't know anything. They're weak. They're not diligent. And who knows, then you come to the next, uh, to the next meeting. And it happens to be that coordinator that is preaching. And then all the members of your family will remember, ah, that's the coordinator that, the, that mommy spoke about, that daddy spoke about. And you don't know the last message we're going to hear before Jesus comes. You don't know the last message that will make a man to buckle up and tie all the things together and get ready for home. And that might be that message. But it is that despised, rejected, gossiped uh, coordinator that is giving that message. And eventually all the members of your family, they don't get anything from that message. If your people are lost because they are good and the evidence of the, the sin that God has for them is hidden inside the message of that coordinator. If your people are lost, their blood will be required at your hand. It may be that you don't know when sickness will come, when emergency will come. But not today because you are healthy, because you have no problem. Your wife is healthy, you yourself you are healthy, your children are healthy. And so you talk about the prayer warriors. Oh, those prayer warriors. You know, I was just passing by, and I saw the way they were praying. I wonder why those prayer warriors are like that. They are not matured at all. They are just shouting and shouting and shouting in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And you say, I don't believe God is answering their prayer. I will never have need of those prayer warriors. Who knows it may be, who knows it may be a week later when you are not around that your wife had emergency problems. And it wasn't possible to get your wife to the pastor. And the only people available to get your wife to are the prayer warriors. But your wife knows a lot of bad, bad things from you, from those, about those prayer warriors. And while they are bringing your wife and they, he said, she said, where are you carrying me to? They said, we're carrying you to the prayer warriors. Oh, he says, I know every one of them. Every one of them, all those people praying there, I don't believe that God can answer their prayers. Why? She doesn't have direct contact with them, only from the conversation at home between husband and wife. And you, husband, you have traveled away. And this is emergency problem for your wife. And those prayer warriors people, they pray, they pray, they pray. The woman cannot believe she knows a lot of bad things about those prayer warriors. If she dies before you come back, the blood of your wife is on your head. You see, there are a lot of people that 
God will be asking them the blood of the people that die. The blood of the people that are lost. It might be that you choose the area leaders at the table. It might be that you discuss the zonal leaders in your own room. It may be that you discuss the house fellowship leaders in front of sinners and in front of other believers. Remember that um, house fellowship leader you are talking about is the watchman. And if by your discussion, his ministry, her ministry of being a watchman becomes ineffective, the blood of the people be required at your hand. Son of man, I've made you a watchman. Hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If thou givest him not warning, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at your hand. Again, when I say to a righteous, when a righteous man sinneth, all his righteousness shall not be remembered again. But because you have not given him warning, he shall die. In his trespass that he has now trespassed, he shall die in them. But his blood will I require at your hand. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 26 and verse 27. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure, from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul could not have been ready for heaven if he wasn't pure from the blood of all men. You are not ready for heaven until you are pure from the blood of all men. You see, there are people that are saying, God, I want to die. Take me home. You are not ready to die yet. A lot of people you have been made watchman over, you have not given them warning. Other people are saying, Lord Jesus, come now. I want to get to heaven because I am sanctified, I am holy, and without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You are not ready for heaven yet. There's still a lot of Abel that the Lord is saying, where is Abel thy brother? Where is Abel thy manager? Where is Abel thy neighbor? Where is that person thy sister? Where are the people? Are you pure from the blood of all men? Save the lost. Keep the saved. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord. And let us pray. Let the Spirit of God speak to you. Are there many people already now that they are on your account? And their blood is to be required at your hand. What will you do when you discover it on that day? Let's rise up on our feet. And talk to the Lord in prayer. Watchman. Are you free? Watchman. Are you pure? from the blood of all men. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for admonishing us tonight. We bless your name for the open scriptures that you have spoken to us. Lord, we are concerned because of your love for mankind. Father, we are so grateful that you have entrusted the ministry of reconciliation into our hands. There are many people who are seeking for help. There are many people who want to know you. They want to come into the knowledge of the truth. And here are we, dear Lord. You so much love God. And you have given your only son to die for our sins. We were once like them. We were once sinners, separated from the commonwealth of Israel. But Father, you had compassion upon us. Father, you changed our lives. 
we have the privilege of praying, confessing our sins to you, asking you for forgiveness and pardon. You received us. You changed our lives. And today, we are rejoicing that Jesus has said the price for our sins. But Lord, we ought to be grateful. We ought to tell other people what to show them the way of life. Our Lord and our God, we are praying that you grant us the grace to fulfill this purpose for our calling in Jesus' name. Today we have the opportunity. The only opportunity we have to live here on earth. Today we have the privilege. The only privilege we have to serve you on earth. Father, we are praying. Whatever we want us to close our mouth, whatever we want us to keep silent, Father, we pray, knock them off from our lives in Jesus' name. The harvest is ripe, and you have called us to be laborers in your vineyard. You have given us your grace. You have given us your spirit. Father, have we received your grace in vain? Have we received your spirit in vain? We see the Jehovah's Witnesses in our neighborhood. They have not the grace in their life. They have not the spirit in their life. And yet they don't want to hold their peace. Father, we pray that their commitment to their self will not judge us at the day of judgment in Jesus' name. Father, we know we love you more than they love their, you know, their self. Father, we know you have done so much in our lives to show us how much you love us. And Lord, we pray that our heart will receive fire from above. Fire for souls. Fire for backsliders. Fire for the sense of steadfastness. That every one of us, men and women, young or old, we will carry the gospel of your kingdom into our nooks and corners in Jesus' name. Moses has come. He served his generation and he has gone to glory. Joshua came. He served his generation and he has gone to glory. We read of Isaiah tonight. How he said, Here am I, Lord, send me. And he used that man. And he used him to serve his generation. Ezekiel is a challenge to all. Daniel is a challenge to all. Peter is a challenge to all. And all the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints. They are telling us that you have called us for a particular purpose. Father, we are praying. You open our eyes 